The Strong Sessions are back. The Vancouver Adapted Music Society's flagship event celebrates musicians with disabilities, featuring performances from four talented artists and bands from our community. Join us on August 25th at the Roundhouse Community Center from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Tickets are by donation. For more information, visit the Vancouver Adapted Music Society on Facebook, at VAM Society on Instagram, or on our website, www.vams.org. We hope to see you there. Hello, and thank you for tuning into Discover Stories on Reimagine Radio. My name is Tanya, your host and a student intern with VAMS while completing my social justice practicum. Today, I have the pleasure of being in conversation with Janice Lawrence. Janice Lawrence is joining us today to chat about her passion for in- for inclusive dance and community building. She has been facilitating virtual dance workshops since 2020 and has met wonderful people through her love of movement. She is a disabled dance artist and her unique movement practice includes a joyful exploration of using various mobility aids. Janice was born with the neuromuscular disease Charcot-Marie Tooth, CMT, type 1A. She enthusiastically believes that movement, community, connections, and diversity are our strengths. Hi, Janice. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Tanya. Thank you so much for the invitation. Mm, I am really excited to hear more about you, your relationship with dance, and also your journey into this space, because um, I know that uh, before dance, it was mostly academia for you. Um, so I guess we can begin with, uh, what does dance mean to you? (laughs) Uh, well, you know, dance to me is a way of going through the world. And if you can breathe, you can dance. And I, I really believe that dance saved my life. I Mm. found dance, um, I started training as a dancer in 2017 mm-hmm. and it just opened up a whole new world for me because um, I just I just needed to go in a different direction and it got me there. Mm. I can elaborate on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, I you know I was I was born with my disability and um and it's a progressive disease and I've, I've had lots of lots of different health setbacks and mm-hmm. um, I was uh, lucky enough to be working as a, a teacher and I've taught university and I've been a, a summer session principal in uh, the Burnaby School District and I've done lots of work in, in academia as you mentioned and um mm-hmm. And then to, to lose that because of my disability and to be put on a, you know, a very, very nice disability pension mm-hmm. um, gave enough financial security to take care of myself. But um, I didn't really feel like I had much of a purpose other than just taking care of myself and managing my health. Mm. And, uh, and then, and then. One time I was I was sitting at a bus stop in my power chair and a woman ran up to me and her shoelace was undone and and I said, Oh, your shoelace is undone and she said, Oh, I'm just on my way to a dance class, so thank hmm. you. And hmm. and then I said, Do you happen to know where someone using a wheelchair could dance in Vancouver? Mm. And she said, Oh yes, you should come to this class next week and she introduced me to All Bodies Dance Project, which is in Metro Vancouver. And uh, the people in All Bodies Dance Project were so welcoming and it was taught so well that I just decided I must learn to teach and share what I'm learning in All Bodies Dance Project. And that led to dancing with many different other dancers, not just All Bodies Dance Project, but Dance for All Bodies and the community dancers and Asian dancers and just lots and lots of different opportunities, action at a distance, uh, new works. Uh, I perform, I've, I've been part of dance festivals and I've met so many people and mm-hmm. I just keep learning more about what dance can be mm-hmm. and it's really changed my way of moving through the world and when the pandemic started 
in 2020, I decided to just start using my skills as a teacher and as a dancer and, and, and start facilitating online dance workshops. And that's how I got involved with Connect Trust through the Disability Foundation. And so mm. typically once a week, you'll find me facilitating a dance workshop on on zoom for connector and people come from all over the world and dance and you know and i'm back in the dance studio and dancing in parks and dancing wherever i can but then i'm always going to offer dance workshops to people on zoom because Mm -hmm. i'm so privileged i i'm learning so much and i want to share it and and i've got this virtual community of people i mostly won't ever get to meet Right. But I can bring dance into their homes and Mm -hmm. that's a long answer. But yeah, (laughs) dance is dance has given me a whole new lease on life, I would say. I reinvented myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I was going to say it sounds like dance has really given you this new passion and purpose um for life and and just spreading that that joy and that relationship you have with movement. Um, especially in the disability community, um, where there's still a lot of barriers to movement and to activities such as dance, um, I can imagine. Yeah, I, you know, I, I certainly have learned a lot more about what it means to be disabled because I'm meeting more and more people with disabilities to my mm-hmm. pursuit of dance. Most of the people I dance with are not disabled. So I'm, right. I'm really lucky enough to be part of inclusive dance spaces mm-hmm. um, where we talk about access needs and, you know, what do we need to know to dance with you today? And mm. like, you know, lots of check-ins and kindness and gentleness and welcomeness. And, um, you know, ableism is always the default in society. It's right. very hard for people to understand what it's like to to live with a disability and feel excluded from many activities. Mm -hmm. And it's great when people don't have to worry about financial barriers as well. And most of what I am offering is free. So I'm I'm really, really proud to be able to be able to share dance with anybody who has a body and then just try to figure out how to make it work and explore the possibilities of difference because that's how I'm treated. Mm -hmm. And I've really tapped into my creative side and my silly side. And, Mm. um, you know, dance can be any kind of emotion to do. So sometimes I'm crying when I'm dancing or Mm -hmm. I'm laughing when I'm dancing and I just feel like a more authentic human being. Mm. And, and, um, I, I, it, it's just, it feels like my calling, like, where has this been all my life? Mm. I've always loved to dance. I was always that, that person, you know, at a wedding or, you know, if I was out in a nightclub with friends, you know, just, I would get all my friends out. Let's get, let's start dancing. <laughs> and yeah. Get pe- people going, you know, and, you know, I would never know when, when my knee would dislocate on the dance floor and down, I would go or, or, you know, I'd have my walker on the dance floor and mm-hmm. people would be buying me drinks and my walker would be filled with alcohol. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I just, I've always been rather fearless. Oh, I um, love that. And of course, yeah, you know, and I've, you know, I've taught, I've, I've taught a zillion students in mm-hmm. elementary schools and high schools and at the university and in principal. And so I'm not shy yeah. and I'm never concerned with what I look like, except Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I give it my best, but I mean, I'm not going to look like somebody's, uh, image of what they think a dancer should be mm. <laughs> because, mm-hmm. you know, I might be using a manual wheelchair or a power chair or a scooter or a walker or a cane, or I might be on the ground or I might be standing. So it's like really pushing the envelope about what disability can be, what dance is. Mm. It really gets people's attention. I, th- mm-hmm. I think it's a very political statement mm-hmm. for me to just show up in a dance space and just expect people to find a way to to dance with me through communication, through listening to each other, through looking, you know, you know just I just need to be able to be in the space, you know. Right. I, I like ramps. I like accessible bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I, I can, I totally have a, 
picture in my head of you just um, being on the dance floor and just being fearless um, and really taking up space. Um, <laughs> and I and I and I'd love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it, that's that's an expression I learned like mm -hmm. take up space mm -hmm. um I think there's so much internalized ableism that comes yeah. from living with a disability and you know and I and I have been told that I take up too much space for example on public transit you know mm. so it's just a matter of um like really feeling confident in my identity and knowing that I'm that I'm having fun but I'm offering something as an entertainer as a performer as an educator yeah. as a friend I think when people see me being vulnerable and authentic it encourages them to be more open and to share and you know when I'm saying hey I'm uncomfortable with touch because it hurts a lot then that gives somebody else a chance to say oh I don't like being touched either you know like just mm. just you know when you when you really know who you are and why you want to be like that then it mm -hmm. it 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 just invites other people to to be like that as well and a lot of people come to my virtual classes um not knowing anybody and then they're welcomed as friends and they might be mm. very shy about turning on their video but then they see the other lovely people from all yeah. over the world who are are moving in ways that they might not have expected and they were like oh this is dance like mm -hmm. th this is dance yes yes this is dance yeah. <laughs> so just yeah I'm, I'm really proud that I'm part of this movement for inclusive dance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and connectors really really helped by hosting these classes mm-hmm yeah, no, I, I can hear it in your voice. Um, and I, I really feel that I, I, I really um, am a huge believer. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm a huge believer in that um, being authentic to ourselves and showing up in a way that is most genuine and authentic to who we are also gives other people permission to step further into who they are. Um, and it and it sounds like that's exactly the the effect that um, happens within your dance classes too, and also just um, in the spaces that you go to and you dance in. Yeah, it's it's you know I would say I'm I'm deeply entrenched kind of in the contemporary improv mm -hmm. um, genre of of dance. I've taken some adaptive dance classes in ballet and hip-hop and um salsa and cumbia like it's always fun like I just like different music and different styles but I really like improv and sometimes you know I'm working with choreographers and we're figuring out um a, a performance project that has a structured improv you know it's, it's never like everything is all kind of mapped out so I I like to to work with a choreographer and figure out, you know, what is it that my body can do and then how can I learn to do that with more technique and skill and grace, if that's what's called for. Um, mm -hmm. But but I never feel like I'm being forced to move in ways that don't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I have a, a very wonderful relationship with dance and that I've never gone through like the traditional kinds of training where people are are shamed or made to feel bad or mm -hmm. um, have body image problems and, um, you know and the fact that I dance with so many different mobility aids means that when I meet people who use the mobility aid or are on the verge of using the mobility aid but haven't quite got there yet then I can say, well, this is how I move with a walker. Or this is what I have found useful with a cane. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, when I dance with a power chair compared to a manual chair, here are the differences. Like, I've, I do the research all the time, and I had to learn it myself. Um, I have had some guidance from some dear friends who also use mobility aids. But yeah, most of it is just figuring it out, just like just trying it and having – the belief in yourself and the mentorship and and the time to just kind of 
explore. And if you have a body, then you can always find a little dance snack. You know, like just just mm-hmm. a little tiny dance snack to help you get through the afternoon or mm-hmm. the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Just that little bit of movement. Um, and you've you've touched on this, but um, what is your philosophy when it comes to teaching, and how has it evolved over the years? Um, I learn a lot from other participants mm. who who come and I really I really value diversity and understanding um, what people are enjoying and are curious about um, mm-hmm. I think I'm much more playful and silly than I ever dreamed possible I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's that's a harder thing to do when you're working in the public school system. But but as a as a you know as a dancer, there just seems to be an invitation for that sometimes. Yeah. Um, my my philosophy is I'm more of a facilitator, I think, than a than a sage on a stage. I have, have my own life experience and and my understandings that I can share from my own perspective but I don't know what it's like to be in someone else's body Mm. Um, but I want to help them figure out Mm. what feels good so whether they will be comfortable dancing on the floor they might not have ever thought that you could dance on the floor or on their bed you can do bed dancing you know Mm. Um, you can dangle an arm off the bed you can bounce on your bed you can jump on your bed you can roll over your bed um you can i i like to show people different choices like how i dance using my couch um and different pieces of furniture or i'll go out on my balcony and dance on my balcony and use the rail as as a a place to hang on to so Mm -hmm. i don't fall over Mm -hmm. um just like i want to be the person that they never knew was out there like I want to show people just how much you can enjoy your own body I have I have taught dance even right after surgery and I've had a cast on my foot and I haven't been able to um to wait there and uh I've joined dance classes from my hospital bed I just think if you're like just letting go of like the ego and want to feel better so I'm going to do this as a gift to myself and Mm. people always say that they feel better after the the dances that's just great I I even had somebody join the last few days of her time on earth she was very close to dying and she joined and she was dancing from her bed and Mm. what a a beautiful compliment that she's spending some of her last hours on earth dancing there's there's other things you could be doing you know Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm just very much in awe very awe of the the resilience of the human spirit and the willingness for people to bravely show up and Mm. dance in a little zoom box (laughs) (laughs) and i do sometimes facilitate classes in person Mm -hmm. uh it's but but you know you and I met through the Disability Foundation's BAMS mm-hmm. program, and um, so I'm talking a lot about the virtual classes. But mm-hmm. as, you know, I'm disabled, and I have to manage my energy and time, so it's easier for me to dance of using course. Zoom. If I'm da- if I'm facilitating an in-person class, that's that's fine once in a while, but I never know how my body's going to feel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, <laughs> and and also, but, yeah. oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, but it's very, very rare that I actually miss a dance event or class mm. because it's just so good for it's just so good for me. My body always seems to find the strength to do it. You mm-hmm. know, even if it's the only thing I do all day, basically, it's like <laughs> I will make it to dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I will get out of bed, get dressed, dance, and then go back to bed. You know, like it's like it's it's, it's my medicine. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. And and you really talk to a lot, um, uh, just about you know learning uh, from 
from the participants um, as much as they're probably learning from you in the process of figuring out what feels good, um, which is definitely a, a form of self-exploration and figuring out boundaries. Um, and it sounds like it's a very collaborative process where nothing, like everything is an invitation um, and also redefining the the spaces in which we can dance, like being in bed, for example, um, which honestly is is not a place where I thought um, somebody could dance in. Um, but that's also because a lot of what dance has been in my life has been taken over by that dominant narrative um, that's been swept by um, ableism. And so to me, dance has looked a certain way and the way you talk about it, it's very much redefining and re-narrating all the spaces where we can dance and how dance can look like, um, which is a very empowering um, yeah, thing and experience. It, it truly is. And and to be, you know, like I, I have, I've had so much grief through um, my my health complications, and it just in, incredible, incredible, awful, awful pain, and mm-hmm. ugh, and and it's like to 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 know that much pain, and then find so much joy in something, and go back and forth between those worlds. It's it's quite something like you, you never know how much pain someone has, Mm -hmm. but if you, if you offer something that feels really good, then it just can, can just improve the quality of your life so much. And that's why I have so much appreciation for life is because I just know how hard life can be. And Mm. just like that, when you go through hard times, you often just have to develop new ways of moving forward, new resilience, new, new people to connect with because, because everything can change when you're dealing with um, the the really hard stuff. And Mm. thank goodness that, that there's, there's opportunities for people and there needs to be more and there needs to be more funding and there's um, more and more dance just, who are interested in how to facilitate inclusive dance classes Mm -hmm. so that they can not be afraid to welcome anybody into their class. Like there's just so much, there's, there's so much uncertainty when somebody sees me roll in with my wheelchair, people often are very uncomfortable and they're nervous. and, Mm. And so I'm finding myself, I often kind of have to put people at ease and just maybe that's why, I can be kind of like late for the party ish, right? Because I want people to to feel comfortable around me. Mm-hmm. But that, you know, those are just some things I'm working through. But but I am generally pretty happy when I go to dance because it's something that I can do. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's, <laughs> and I don't care if it doesn't look the same as what other people are doing. And I can figure out modifications in most classes so that that I'm having a good time and. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just I would just never teach a class where I'm going to criticize anybody for moving in a certain way or not being able to do something. And yeah, people get yeah. Just I just want people to just enjoy their bodies and mm-hmm. dance can be stillness too. Dance can be breathing. Dance can be internal. Dance can be tiny. Mm. Um, you know, some, watching somebody's face can be a dance too. So. In my virtual classes, we often do solos where everybody turns their video off and one person has their video on and they do a solo for us. And sometimes we give back something that we remember from their solo Mm. or sometimes we just enjoy it. And we do little group works or duets or trios or, you know, it's just fun. Depending who shows up, I never know who's going to show up. Sometimes it's 10 people. Sometimes it's 27 people. Mm. Sometimes it's four people. Like, I never know. And, you know, it's always kind of exciting. What's dance going to be like <laughs> today? <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And I learned to DJ. I use Spotify. I make up playlists. And then, and you know, I, I try to have different varieties of, of music and Typically, it's instrumental and mm-hmm. just what 
But my classes are a gift for myself, what I want to explore that day. And then hopefully when I'm really curious and eager, then, then that brings that energy to the, to the people that are chosen to spend their time with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I can totally imagine that. This podcast is brought to you by the Vancouver Adapted Music Society. Since 1988, VAMS has been supporting and promoting musicians with disabilities in Metro Vancouver through various programs, including music lessons, recording projects, and live performance opportunities. To learn more about us, visit our website at www.vams.org, at VAMS Society on Instagram, the Vancouver Adapted Music Society on Facebook, or email us at info at vams.org. Thanks for listening.